Hi all, this game is from the European Team Championships being played at the moment. This game was played on Sunday just gone between Zvidla, Peter Zvidla, rated 2732, against Berg, 2593. So it was Russia versus Sweden. Zvidla representing Russia, he played E4, and Berg played the French defence, and we have now the mainline winner variation and you really need to know your theory if you're going to play like this with white so after knight e7 the sharp queen g4 move being played in this main line attacking the g7 pawn black sacrifices this g7 pawn for a lot of counterplay as well as the h pawn so white is temporarily material up but black now has a lot of strong counterplay to deal with knight e2 and now knight e6 and now f4 supporting this e5 pawn. It is important not to lose that pawn. Bishop d7. And now the queen retreats back to, g to d3. Black now takes on c3. And this is all still theory. However, I believe there are some choices here. Perhaps knight takes c3 is a theoretical choice. But Zvidla played rook g1. And it is quite interesting now how White played. He played g4 to try and neutralize the g-file pressure. And also it gives the g3 square available for the White Rook. So this Rook here can, can later perhaps swing to the Queen side. After d4, Rook b1 was played. So White's content not to castle in this variation. But both rooks are quite active. The G rook and the B rook are quite active in this variation. Bishop E8. With this move, black supports that D pawn with the rook on D8. But also maybe F6 is on the cards at some point. And in fact, after rook G3, black played F6 immediately. So it's a positional pawn sacrifice with the idea of increasing black's pressure in the center. It didn't turn out to be a temporary pawn sack either though, because after knight d5, white played now a very interesting move. He played queen c4, so this queen dares to lose another tempo with this move to discourage knight takes f6. Let's see, if knight takes f6, then is it a clear win of a piece? Queen takes e6, check. And now if knight d7, there would be queen takes g8. And this is okay for white. Material up winning. So this has in fact discouraged knight takes f6. But black continues the center counterattack and plays e5. So we have a very dramatic position here. White now dares to try and cling on to this f6 pawn. But also it's positionally gaining space on the king side. You have to factor in white's king safety though, being in the centre. It's a very sharp position. After bishop f7, there are very nasty threats now on the white queen which have to be dealt with. So the queen actually is content to retreat back to d3. And the e4 square looks like a nice square in principle to sit on if the e file isn't going to be ripped open by black. Now strangely black allowed this, maybe there wasn't too much choice and white's already better. For example, if g e8, then g6, and maybe white's better here. In the game, bishop g6 was played, and after f5, white has the beautiful e4 square now for the queen. So this e file pressure is not coming to fruition yet, and white now evacuates his king to the g1 square, away from the e file at least, to make black's threats a bit less. After bishop g7, bishop g2, black now plays knight b6 with the idea of bishop d5. However, white seems to be consolidating a bit. Black plays now e4, and white continues this pawn storm on the king side now with f7. These pawns are becoming very uncomfortable, and black decided to play knight e5, attacking the queen instead of moving the rook. After queen f4, e3 check, king g1, now rook e7. So the position is still incredibly sharp, incredibly complex, 
but white now simplifies a little bit with bishop takes d5 and after knight t takes d5 dares to play queen takes d4 but the king is safer than it was before and that g3 rook is is showing it has defensive duties now on the f3 square which are very useful critical in fact so white can get away with this and also white is now threatening that a7 pawn black now sacrificed a piece with knight takes f7 and after gf rook takes f7 white's clearly better white played bishop takes e3 now so black's center has been destroyed and what compensation does black have now it seems very little after queen takes a7 rook e8 white was able to simplify the position and after knight d4 we end up with this end game where white's a whole knight up for nothing and here black resigned it was an incredibly sharp game let's have a quick conclusions and summary an incredibly sharp french defense winner with variation main line queen g4 black gets a lot of g-file pressure and counterplay white's careful not to lose the e5 pawn in this line instead of knight takes c3 white chose rook g1 with the idea of g4 and a rook g3 the rook on g3 is very useful here and also lets the king evacuate to the g1 square as we'll see in this game that was very very important to be able to do that after g5 white kept control of that f6 pawn and black now played bishop f7 and strangely bishop g6 but the position might have been quite bad it really requires a lot of analysis but white seemed to have the upper hand now with control of that e4 square and after this f7 move was increasing the advantage the king successfully evacuated to g1 so if you can weather the storm like this you can get a win it would seem as a result of the opening the very sharp opening to gain advantage it's not my style of play I, I chicken out with the English opening as white but for those who want to play more theoretically and sharply this is a model game perhaps to study for playing against the French defence just to play the main line winner take, take the pawn on g7 and play the counterplay destroying moves that are necessary so I hope you enjoyed that game from the first round of the European Championships and um, thanks for listening see you on YouTube